Coming up on tonight's This Week in Politics. When I came out in 2015, it was for the simple reason that I was finally ready. I had been wrestling with my sexuality for years. Democratic presidential hopeful Pete Buttigieg talks about being an openly gay man seeking the presidency. And he used this speech to take aim at a member of the Trump administration for his stance on gay rights. We've got that story coming up. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Allen. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. First, though, we will be spending some time with another presidential hopeful, former Congressman Beto O'Rourke of Texas. Last November, he came close to unseating incumbent Republican Ted Cruz in a U.S. Senate election. Well, now he has made the decision to take another run at politics, this time with the White House in mind. I was able to talk one-on-one -on -one with O'Rourke during a campaign stop he made in Sioux City just more than a week ago. How's everybody doing? Good to see you. Good to be with you. We caught up with Beto O'Rourke at Morningside College in Sioux City. His stop there seems to be part of a pattern for O'Rourke of holding campaign stops on college campuses. Young voters in Iowa gave Bernie Sanders a boost in 2016 and provided Barack Obama with the first major victory of his presidential campaign back in 2008. O'Rourke tells me he is courting young voters in Iowa, hoping for a similar result. You know, young people are providing so much of the leadership right now. I think about any significant issue that has a hope of changing, uh, trying to get health care for everybody, making sure this economy works for all, the issue of gun violence or confronting climate change before it's too late. It's very often the very youngest people in college, community college, high school even, who are leading the charge right now. And that really is how it has always been in this country. You know, those who are willing to sacrifice their lives and did in World War II or in Vietnam who have their lives on the line right now, 18, 19, 20 year olds, um, should be no surprise that the ones leading on the most important policy challenges. But it is not just Iowa caucus history that O'Rourke is looking to. Five months ago, he fell just short of unseating Republican Senator Ted Cruz in Texas by a margin of 214,000 votes. It was young voters in Texas that helped O'Rourke narrow the gap in that contest. In Texas, in 2018, we saw young voter turnout up 500 percent. And in part, it was because we went to go meet with and listen to and allow young people to lead. I asked O'Rourke how he plans on campaigning in a political environment that is this polarized, with both Democrats and Republicans seemingly leaning to the extremes of their beliefs and leaving what political analysts say are a shrinking number of moderates in the middle. He tells me he feels his political style is different and as such, he may be able to bring more people to the table regardless of their political background. This country has been as divided uh, right now as I can remember it being, as polarized, as partisan. And if we're going to confront any of these challenges, especially the most existential of them, climate change, we're going to have to bring this country together. Republicans, Democrats, rural, urban communities, all of us coming together to see the common challenges and the common opportunity. And so given the race that we were able to run in Texas, um, our style of politics, which is not divisive, not putting other people down, but expecting and bringing out the very best in one another. We knew we had a unique opportunity to confront these challenges. And there are a lot of us, there are a lot of them before us, but it's going to take a lot of us coming together to meet them. But O'Rourke acknowledges that he can't just ask people to come to him. The backbone of the Iowa caucus process is candidates going to the voters and not just depending on radio or TV commercials to get their message across. And that involves showing up, knocking on doors, uh, holding town hall meetings, um, answering questions, being held accountable by those whom you wish to serve. That's the way that I've always served or campaigned. That's the way that I'm campaigning right now across the state. And I tell you, I'm learning a lot, um, including how ready everyone is in Iowa and in this country to make sure that they get after it and, and pursue the priorities of this country. I talked with O'Rourke about the Trump administration's continuing trade war with China, which has been in place since last July, and the price farmers are paying by not being able to sell to that lucrative foreign market. So many of these farmers are having such a hard time making profit, uh, being able to pass that farm on to the next generation instead of selling it to be subdivided into homes. To exacerbate that problem, this president's trade war, the tariffs that he's levied, the reciprocal tariffs our farmers have faced, have made an already tough situation much worse and untenable for many. You then have the Missouri River busting its banks, uh, drowning some of these farms, including the grain that was in storage, because it couldn't go to markets in China because the tariffs prevented our sale of our grains that we're growing here to those markets upon which we depend. 
We need disaster relief in the short term, including for stored grain. We need investment in infrastructure in the Army Corps of Engineers uh, along the banks of the Missouri. But long term, we have to prioritize those who grow our food, our fiber that feeds and clothes, not just America, but so much of the rest of the world. All I hear from farmers is that they want to make a profit. They're not looking to get rich. They understand that our food security and by extension our national security is in their hands. I want to make sure that we are partnering with those farmers and not putting them into more debt through these trade wars that I don't know are winnable and are certainly being borne by the farmers of this country right now. While O'Rourke says the United States faces several challenges right now, he also says campaigning in Iowa for next year's caucus makes him feel hopeful for the future. He says the voters he is encountering are engaged in the political process and asking tough questions and demanding real answers. He says he has been impressed by that, but that he has also learned something along the way about what it's like to run for the nation's top job. I'm also impressed by how hard this is to make sure that you visit every single community, listen to everyone, think through every issue that is raised to you, um, have the humility of understanding that you don't know every answer, you haven't had every experience, you don't bring to the table every skill or expertise, but there are so many people here who do and they're willing to share if you're willing to listen. Democratic presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke with us tonight. When This Week in Politics continues. So, next time a reporter asks me if America is ready for a gay president, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to give him the only answer that I can think of that's honest, and it's this. I trust my fellow Americans, but at the end of the day, there is exactly one way to find out for sure. Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg discusses the intersection of national politics and LGBTQ rights and takes aim at Vice President Pence along the way. That story, when This Week in Politics, continues on KSFY.